Views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Ball, the borough special event where we welcome home Bronx icons. This year's honorees have excelled in their chosen crafts by holding on to their ideals and passions they obtained here in the Bronx. So join us as we hit the red carpet here at the 2017 Bronx Ball. This is the 20th anniversary of the Walk of Fame and we have a wonderful class of honorees uh, from Dr. Villafania uh, to Selenis Leva, uh, Funk Master Flex who is a pioneer in hip-hop and of course Prince Royce. We honor people who have done great things who come from the Bronx but also uh, part of the criteria is that you have to wear coming from the Bronx as a badge of honor. This is an exciting evening for us because we're able to honor uh, some of our former Bronx residents, uh, those who are representing the Bronx um, nationally and internationally and we're delighted to do that and so it's a great night to celebrate the Bronx and celebrate all the different, diverse, brilliant and gifted and talented people in it. Well, I'm excited to meet some of the uh, honorees. Uh, many of them come here and, and, and they're just shocked at, you know, wow, I'm in the Bronx. And we have a gentleman, Dumani Villafania, who came from Minnesota and his family's excited about being in the Bronx. Energy. And it's just thrilling to be singled out in this way by Ruben Diaz Jr., the Bronx Borough President, and also by Bronx Tourism Council. I think it's an honor, I think it's a pleasure for me, you know, coming from the Bronx, I grew up on uh, Patterson Projects 140 and 3rd Avenue, not far from the concourse, and uh, I think it's a pleasure for me. I would always walk down there and say, you know, one name, my name's going to be on there, and I think the day came, and I hope my story is an inspiration to the youth, you know, to kids like me that grew up in the Bronx, that want to be somebody, that they want to be a doctor, they want to be, you know, a singer, actor, whatever it is, and anything's possible with a lot of work. Oh, yeah. amazing. Um, shout out to um, Ruben Diaz Jr. He's really great and uh, I'm from the Bronx. So this is amazing. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. We had a, we've had a day where we've gone and reviewed some of the old things I used to live with over here and even visited my old street where I was born and raised, East 139th Street. It feels amazing. I always come back to the Bronx because my parents still live here and it's, it's home. But to be inducted in such a big way. This is huge. And then the inductees also. It's a girl's dream come true, really.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage six-time Emmy Award winning anchor Sukanya Krishna. Good looking. I am so excited to be here with all of you tonight. And you know, they asked me back and I was like, I gotta do it. When Ruben asks, you just have to do certain things. And so it is a yes. It is a pleasure for me, give it up right now behind the Carl Brown Band, ladies and gentlemen. And your DJ tonight is 92.3 Amp Radio's DJ Ready, DJ! All right, so I was thinking to myself, what can I say about the Bronx? What is there to say? There's not much, but I just thought, let's start off with the other boroughs, right? So we're gonna start off with Manhattan. Oh, what does Manhattan have? It has, that, it has you. It has you, lady in blue, stand up. Stand up, come on! She's representing the borough tonight. You know, it's got Wall Street, it's got the financial headquarters, it's got the cultural center, it's got the UN, it's got Uptown, East Side, West Side, blah, blah, blah. But did you know Manhattan is the smallest borough? I mean, I mean, it's small, but the Bronx is like this big. I'm just saying. Did you know about Brooklyn? All right, Letitia, I see you too. Word up to you. But to me, Brooklyn only has two O's. Get it? Get, get it, Brooklyn two O's? Thanks. It's so hard being a news person sometimes. And Queens and Staten Island, well, I heard they're nice places to drive through when you get to the Bronx. I'll take that because I'm from Staten Island. I'll take that. You know, there's only one borough called the Bronx, right? The Bronx. BX for short. There's only one team, Yankees. One stadium, Yankee Stadium. Believe it or not, it's the friendliest borough, but it always depends on who you run into. <laughs> thank you, thank you. There's bodegas for days, for everything. It's the birthplace of hip hop. Break dancing is still boss. It's the home of salsa. You didn't know an Indian girl could do that, right? You got Pelham Parkway, you got Arthur Avenue, you got Grand Concourse, you've got the Bronx Zoo. There's only one borough, the Bronx. There's only one borough you can count on, and tonight we're counting on you, the Bronx. It's the only home, it's the only place, wherever you go home, it welcomes you back home. And it welcomes you with open arms, because there is one man that is always leading the charge here, and it is that man standing at that table. Please stand up. Bronx Borough President, Ruben Diaz, Jr. If there is a heart to every borough, that heart beats right there. So that was my jokes for the night, but it could keep coming depending on how much wine I drink. Um, tonight, believe it or not, we're celebrating 20 years. 20th anniversary of the Bronx Walk of Fame. Since 1997, there have been 110 sons and daughters of the Bronx inducted and it has been incredible. Tonight, 114 
will make it to the Bronx Walk of Fame. We're going to have lots of fun. A full program is planned for you. Get ready to dance, because you know Carl Brown Band is waiting. Um, and I have to introduce you to the first speaker. She is a woman who has played such a major role in rebranding the Bronx. She is a champion to attract businesses as well as people to become major stakeholders, putting their money where it counts. It's all thanks in part of her work and her organization. As of last month, get this, the Bronx is no longer number one in unemployment in New York State. <laughs> Nearly 116,000 additional jobs, additional Bronx residents now have jobs than they did in 2009. Businesses are receiving capital to expand further through uh, uh, BODEC, B-O-E-D-C-E. Did I say that right? Thank you. Uh, she understands the business. She understands the power of what it is to be human capital, to move that on a daily basis, putting our best foot forward all the time. Please help me to welcome to the stage President of the Bronx Overall Economic Development Corporation, Marlene Sintron. I just told her I had no idea who she was talking about. I really did. Thank you. Bronx Week could not be possible without the partnership of several sponsors. On behalf of the Bronx, I'd like to say thank you to the following institutions for helping us to make Bronx 2017 a super memorable one, and we're not done. To our gold sponsor, Montefiore Medical Center. To our silver sponsors, Airbnb, Con Edison, Goya Foods, Health First, United Healthcare. Also many thanks to our bronze sponsors, Altice Affinity, Bronx Community College, Austos Community College, Lehman College. Thank you also to Citadel, WellCare, St. Barnabas Health Systems, and Lincoln Hospital. Of course, we would not be able to do the work that we do without our in-kind partners who help us get the word out, print our calendars, and provide us with great videos that you will see tonight. Amp Radio, thanks for the music. BronxNet, thanks for the videos. Bronx Design, thank you for the printing and your patience, we love you. And congratulations on receiving an award last Tuesday. Thank you, <laughs> thank you to our Bronx Ball benefactors, Clear Channel, Thank you. Hutch Metro, thank you. And VIM, thank you. <laughs> Our Bronx Ball friends, Acacia Network, Association for Energy Affordability and Grid Alternatives, Azimuth, Bronx Lebanon, Classical Cleaning, Delicioso Coco Helado, Fresh Direct, Metropon Realty, Metropolitan Realty, and last but definitely not least, because they stole one of my staff members. You're forgiven. You gave her a huge raise, which she deserved. Ponce de Leon Federal Bank. Montefiore Health Systems has continuously been one of our biggest sponsors for not just Bronx Week, but so many events in the borough. And this is serious if you'll just listen for one second. The Bronx is no longer number one in unemployment. And it's not 116,000. We have created 117,000 new jobs in the last eight years. But Montefiore has been helping us on another issue that we want to move the needle, and that is the issue of health. We're number one. We're the number one county as the most unhealthy county in New York State. And that 
is not acceptable. And so Montefiore Hospital is the largest employer in the borough. One out of every four people who live in the Bronx work for Montefiore. They are 35,000 strong. And they have supported health systems, such as our Tour de Bronx, which is the largest free cycling event in New York State. Over 8,000 people get on a bike in October, and they do a heck of a job. I wave at them, and I register them, and then I give them pizza and water at the end. Hey, I'm moving. Our Not 62 initiative that promotes a healthier Bronx is another one that they support, and so much more. We thank you, Monty. So as a result, it gives me great pleasure and an honor to bring up a sister, Latina, and senior director of the Office of Government and Community Relations for our partner, Montefiore, Ms. Melissa Cebollero. <laughs> Hola familia, how's everybody feeling? Thank you Marlene, those, uh, go ahead, you work. Those words are heartfelt on behalf of Montefiore and table number nine over there. Shout out to table number nine. We are proud to still be your gold sponsor for this fabulous event that showcases everything that is fabulous about this borough that I was born and raised in. And we are proud to remain partners with the borough president's office and everything that is promoting wellness and health. And we're committed to remain in that same place. So thank you to all of you. Congratulations to the honorees. Have a beautiful evening and enjoy. Our Tourism Award is granted to an institution or an individual who has a significant impact in attracting vi visitors to our great borough. To present this award, I'd like to introduce to you a woman who became the head of tourism nearly five years ago. She has played a major role in rebranding the borough, especially the international markets. And Olga, you don't know this, but I was getting some lechon at a little cart at, on Fox Street, near Fox Street, and there were some French bloggers doing their thing and promoting our food. So thank you, Olga, for what you do. But certainly, she conceptualized and designed our first Bronx Visitor's Guide, which is now in its third printing. Its advertising revenue has increased. You ready for this? by 75% since the first issue in 2015. She has developed and produced compelling and fun tours, such as the Spirits and Breweries Tour, that starts at 10 o'clock in the morning and finishes at 5 o'clock on a Saturday. And they are designed to give visitors a rich and positive Bronx experience that they will not soon forget. Her efforts result in good media coverage in travel, trade, and consumer publications throughout Europe, South America, Canada, and the continental United States. Please help me welcome to the stage the executive director and the most amazing director of, Bronx, of our Bronx Tourism Council, Ms. Olga Luz Tirado. Thank you. Happy Bronx Week. Woo! Welcome. Bienvenido. Benvenuto. Bienvenue. Benvinda. Y miripetur. Bilkom. Achelambak Bika. 
That was my attempt at English, Spanish, Italian, French, Portuguese, Albanian, German, and Arabic. Because diversity is one of the many things we celebrate here in the Bronx, right? You would be surprised at the smiles I get from international visitors just because I learned to say welcome and thank you in their language. And thank you is what I say to our many attractions, those institutions that have partnered with the Bronx Tourism Council and have represented the Bronx so positively and so eagerly. Many of you are here tonight. To you I say, thank you, gracias, grazie, merci, danke, xie obrigada, salamat po, jenguie ichi. That's English, Spanish, Italian, French, German, Mandarin, Portuguese, Filipino, and Polish. Pa que lo sepa. This year's Tourism Award goes to an institution I refer to as an oasis, a hidden treasure, a place I myself go to decompress, meditate, read a book, to get away from the vicissitudes of everyday life. How do you like that word? Vicissitudes of everyday life. That's English. In the past few years, Wave Hill has enjoyed record-breaking increases in visitor numbers which include not only Bronxites rediscovering our borough, but people from around the country and around the world. What are they discovering? Let's take a look. is a 28-acre public garden and cultural center in the Bronx. It is one of New York's hidden gems. We have a wonderful location high up above the Hudson River, overlooking the river and the Palisades in New Jersey. People walk onto this property and it hits them right here. It's this wow moment of, I can't believe this is in New York City. Wave Hill offers a chance to be together in a very peaceful way, to let everything go, and to synthesize everything that you've experienced in this very unique environment. It's completely clean and pristine. You can take your shoes off and walk barefoot in the grass. You can put your little three-month-old child down without worry. Everything we do here at Wave Hill is designed to help people make a connection to the natural world. Wave Hill attracts visitors from all over the region and the country. And over the last few years, we're seeing more international tourists, particularly from places where public gardens are prized. And I have to credit Bronx Tourism Council, as well as NYC and Co. for helping Wave Hill to attract that diverse audience. It's very important to us that our family keep growing and that our New York family have a chance to interact with this greater world connection. Everybody here at Wave Hill is so thrilled and honored to receive this year's Bronx Week Tourism Award. We'd like to thank our Bronx Borough President, Ruben Diaz Jr., as well as the Bronx Tourism Council for partnering with us so closely this year. We're really proud to represent the rich cultural diversity of the Bronx. More than anything else, Wave Hill is a place of peace and community where everybody is welcome. And we look forward to welcoming you here. Wave Hill has, has meant a lot to me and to my family, and for that reason, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the stage Wave Hill's President and Executive Director, Karen Meyerhoff.
going on my desk. This is fabulous. <laughs> thank you, everyone. I'm so thrilled to be here. I really am. And thank you to Ruben Diaz, Jr. and to Olga Torado. Such good friends. I recently had all five borough presidents have lunch at Wave Hill together, and I'm just here to tell you we have the best one. I know that not everybody here knows Wave Hill, and I will talk about it a little bit, but before I do that, I want to find out a little bit more about you. So I want you to raise your hand if you live or work or were born in the Bronx. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, now keep your hand up if you already knew that the Bronx is the greenest borough in New York City. Okay, and here's the clincher. Keep your hand up if you've actually been to Wave Hill. <laughs> oh, good turnout. Okay, everybody else can go home. <laughs> I just wanted to make a point about the Bronx. The greenest borough. Think about it. Pelham Bay Park, Van Cortland Park, the Bronx Zoo, the New York Botanical Garden. Seton Falls Park, Ewan Park, Riverdale Park, Wave Hill, and the list goes on. Those green spaces are really important to New Yorkers. We live in such an intensely urban environment, and we really need places where we can just relax and unwind with people we love in a natural environment. We hunger for that connection with nature. And that is Wave Hill's mission to connect people with nature. We want people to care about the environment and understand the environment, but first you have to make, you have to have a relationship with it. So everything that we do, all of our public programs, all of our educational programs, our gardens, our woodland, everything we do for the arts is all there to create various avenues for people to connect with nature. For those who have been to Wave Hill, I mean, you just saw the pictures. You walk onto the property and are high up on a bluff overlooking the Hudson River with this vista of the Palisades in front of you. And you're surrounded by these incredible flowers and trees and the birds are singing and you just can't believe you're in New York. People come from all over the region, the country, and the world to have that experience. But it isn't just the beauty and the tranquility that make Wave Hill so beloved. It's also a sense of community. At Wave Hill, we like to call it our Wave Hill family. Some of you out there may have met at Wave Hill. Some of you may have married there. Some of you had your child learn to walk on our grass. Some of you may have been Forest Project interns or come on a school trip. Or you might, have, you might be an artist who spent time in our winter workspace program or exhibiting in our galleries. Those of you who are regulars, you probably can't wait for the first sunset Wednesday when you can <laughs> gather on the grass and listen to music. We're gonna have two salsa nights this, <laughs> this season. So no matter who you are and no matter where you come from, Wave Hill welcomes you and when you visit the property, you become part of our family. So for those of you who didn't have your hands up for question three, I hope that you will visit us because I'd like to welcome you into that family. Thank you. And thank you for this. Everybody here this evening is a VIP. And that's because most of you are from the Bronx, right? Sorry, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Manhattan. I want to recognize all of the elected officials who have joined us this evening. So the following two we're here for the cocktail hour and have left us, but Assemblyman and Speaker Carl E. Hasty, the New York City Council Speaker Melissa Mark 
Viverito. Bronx Democratic County Leader, Assemblyman Marcos Crespo. New York City Public Advocate, Letitia James. Congressman Joseph Crowley. Congressman Joe Serrano. New York State Senator, Reverend Ruben Diaz Sr. New York State Senator, Marisol Alcantara. New York State Senator, Jose Marco Serrano. Assemblyman Jeffrey Dinowitz. Councilman Rafael Salamanca Jr. Assemblyman Mark Jonai. Assemblywoman Latoya Joyner. Assemblyman Victor Pichaldo. New York City Councilwoman Annabel Palma. <laughs> Representing Governor Cuomo, our New York State Secretary of State, Latina and from the Bronx, Rosana Rosado. And finally, Bronx County Clerk, Louis Diaz. We thank you. I can't believe it's been eight years, almost eight years, but certainly time has flown by and I have had a blast. I have worked with an individual who was a visionary, someone who was very focused, someone who gave me all the rope I needed to hang myself or possibly do something for the borough. Someone who supports women like, any, like no other elected official. Someone who really and truly loves this borough, loves his people, and smiles. He's got an engaging smile that's genuine. And someone who's passionate at not only moving the borough forward, but all its people, all its children, all its seniors, all of us together in one accord. So I am beyond honored and delighted to once again introduce to you an amazing man, our borough president, Ruben Diaz, Jr. I just want to thank Marlene and the whole BOEDC team. Let's give Marlene a strong round of applause. Come on, you can do better than that. They've been doing a great job. Don't get too tight and stiff on me tonight. Tonight's about having a good time. I, I just want to thank all of you for coming out here today. Uh, I, I also want to recognize uh, my partner at Borough Hall, Deputy Borough President Aurelia Green. I want to say to Suki, 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 you are amazing. You're intelligent. You're beautiful. You're funny. You're caring. You become a friend. You're an adopted Bronx. Let's give Suki a strong round of applause. Thank you for accepting and being with us here once again. I, I want to thank Olga Lustirado and the Bronx Tourism Council. Let's give her a strong round of applause. I want to thank my staff. My staff works really hard on this. Led by the chief of staff, Paul Del Duca. Paul, stand up, Paul. I know that he was mentioned. I want to acknowledge my father, State Senator Reverend Ruben Diaz. I want to thank my sister, retired sergeant of the NYPD, Damaris Diaz. I want to 
Say bendición, mami, se te quiere de gratis. You're the woman who gave me life. My mother, Ila. I want to recognize the, the, the gorgeous, she was the baddest chick around the neighborhood 28 years ago. She's the first lady now. My beautiful wife, Ila, I love you. Love you, mommy. And then she gave me the one thing that no one could give me, which are the pride, the pride of my life. My two sons, Ruben and Ryan. Stand up, fellas. <laughs> to all of the sponsors, I want to uh, just make sure that you understand how much we appreciate not only sponsoring and supporting Bronx Week, but every single thing that you do every single day to make this Bronx a better Bronx for everyone. Life is not perfect, but what we've been able to celebrate over the last 10 days now, we call it Bronx Week, so what? That's how we do it in the Bronx, 10 days. Yeah, that's what we do here. We, we, so we do what we do, right? What we've been able to accomplish and celebrate is amazing. Please do not trivialize it. Please understand that every single one of us and so many others, thousands of others who are not here tonight, are helping to write this narrative. All of my colleagues in government, let's give it up for all the elected officials. Give them a strong round of applause. <laughs> Bringing home the resources, all of you who are creating jobs, all of you who continue to invest in our borough, especially when perhaps somebody probably thought that you were crazy for doing so. The unemployment rate is something that everyone is looking at. Economic development continues to boom. The infrastructure is at a pace where no one would ever believe in our borough. Getting help from the state, the federal government, city government. Think about how we are showing the world what it's like to be at one point, let's be frank, at one point we were the national symbol of decay. At one point, we were the laughing stock. Now we are the paradigm of what it means that if you really, really care, that if you're not in it just to make a buck, that if you care about a particular community, about a particular borough, that you can really change the lives of one little segment of New York City called the Boogie Down Bronx. We are a borough of 1.4 million people and counting. We are a borough of immigrants. While there's a... While there's this whole debate going on in D.C., and a whole lot of vilification on immigrate, immigrants and, and the immigration debate, I wish that they took a look at what's happening here in our borough. We are all the better because of our diversity. People come here from all walks of life, from every corner of the planet, to find a better home and a better future for their kids and their grandkids. And so, if the Bronx is better, if we are who we are, there's a, there's a certain swag about us. There's a certain attitude about us. You give a little girl in our borough a stage, and she'll go on to be the best actress that the world has seen. You give a little boy in our borough a science lab, and the opportunity to, to become a med student, and he'll go out there and become a perfectionist and, and, and somebody who has transformed the lives and has saved millions of lives because he perfected the heart, the pacemaker. We are the birthplace of hip hop. You give a little boy or a little girl a pen and pad and a beat or a beatbox, and they'll go and create a whole genre of music. Yeah. 
but even more so, they'll become entrepreneurs in that genre and open up doors for so many others. You give a little boy a, a stoop in the Bronx and a dream and a melodious voice, and he'll not only sing real nice music, but he'll make so many people fall in love while, he's doing, while they're listening to him. We are here for a purpose, ladies and gentlemen. We are here during an amazing, incredible time. Please, if nothing else, do not trivialize your purpose. Do not trivialize your contribution. You know, over the last year, year and a half, I had a, a big decision to make. But I decided to stay right here with all of you in the Boogie Down Ground. We are going to recognize an amazing class of inductees. We're going to have a great dinner. I hope that you celebrate and that you party because you all work so hard. Tonight is a night to be elegant, to laugh, to have great conversation, and just have a great time. Party on and God bless the Bronx. say when I have Ruben on TV, I always say, Ruben, when are you running for mayor? <laughs> Only a matter of time, ladies and gentlemen, a matter of time. I just want to thank Ruben for always being so gracious, such a gentleman, such a man who speaks from the heart and who's passionate about his borough that he loves. Congratulations to Marlene, Olga, Wave Hill, and to all the other attractions and everyone that's here tonight. Are you hungry? You want to eat? You want to dance, take a little break? We've got an amazing meal prepared by Havana Cafe and Chef Ramon Perez. Let's give them a round of applause. We'll be back in a few. Bon appetit a manjar, de frutar, a comer, buen provecho. I think what makes Havana Cafe special or different is just our overall environment. It's not just a restaurant. 80% of our guests are return customers, which is wonderful for us. It's become a neighborhood, a neighborhood gem. This is a restaurant that serves uh, predominantly Cuban dishes. We have a really well-rounded menu. We have vegetarian, we have vegan options. We also have great sandwiches. Regardless of what you're looking for, we have traditional Latin food, we have traditional Cuban food, but we also have lighter fare. We have a very well-rounded menu, and there's something for everybody. We have mojitos. Uh, we, we, you know, our bartenders are first class. Our mojitos are hand muddled, every single one. What people should expect when they come here is that they encounter a family-friendly environment. I think most of all what I want people to experience and walk away with is a feeling that they walked in somewhere where they were made to feel like they were at home. The overall ambiance, the overall feel of family and community and, and, and comfort and friendliness that they encounter when they come here, it's genuine and I think people, they, they sense that. To me Latin cuisine is really an emotion, it has a lot to do um, obviously with good ingredients, but it's about the passion that you put into the food that you do. And that's what we want people to feel when they come here. of 2017. <laughs> okay, so you all know that Bronx Week started out as Bronx Day 46 years ago. 
But it was 20 years ago that we, uh, with, through the leadership of our former borough president, Fernando Ferrell, we started the Bronx Walk of Fame. And since then, it has become one of the most anticipated events during the annual Bronx Week celebration where we pay tribute to the sons and daughters of the borough who have gone to accomplish a great deal of many things that make us all so proud. So let us take a look at our list of previous Bronx Walk of Fame inductees.
So those were some of the magnificent people that are on the Bronx Walk of Fame, and it's now time for the 2017 inductees. So are you guys ready to party? All right, Ruben, we got to get the crowd stirred up. So let's hear it. All right. Let's, you, okay, they go let. Okay, so this is my side. Okay, this is my side. Okay, and this okay. is my side. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go with your side, let's see. All right, so let me hear a beat. How can I move the crowd? First of all, ain't no mistakes allowed. Here's the instructions, put it together. It's simple, ain't it? But quite clever. Some of you been trying to write rhymes for years, but weak ideas irritate my ears. Is this the best that you can make? If not, if you got more, I'll wait. Suki! Suki brings it out of me. All right, are you ready for this year's inductees? Our first honoree, ladies and gentlemen, was born and raised in the South Bronx on East 139th Street. At the age of 10, he found solace in the Kips Bay Boys and Girls Club, where he played ping pong and chess. The club, he said, kept him out of trouble and focused. And, he, and focused he was. He graduated from Carnu Hayes, which makes him a Hayesman. Any Hayesman in the house? My son is a Hayesman. He entered the field of medical technology where he and his team engineered a device that enhanced the life of the pacemaker, revolutionizing the industry. He holds several patents, which include designs for a, for a bi-leaflet me mechanical heart valve, I hope I'm doing that right, and other life-saving devices. He's a success. He actually has the nickname Cardiac Kahuna. Please take a look at our first honoree. I grew up primarily in the Bronx, South Bronx of New York. Most of my time I, I would go down to a boys club and uh, I became a member of that club and spent a lot of time there. So it was the club that kept me off the street. It was the club that, that kind of was like my surrogate father where they gave me a little job to hang up coats at uh, 40 cents an hour. I was learning, but I didn't make a, didn't make a lot of money. So I decided to go and look for a job. And I got this job at a company called uh, Picker, which was a, uh, an x-ray company, the largest x-ray company in the world at that time. Because that was my first exposure to the cardiac area, to the medical area, and again, learning all the time. So my education wasn't a formal education that of a university or a college, but rather the experiences that I had in a variety of different positions in, in electronics, in chemistry, in the heart, to the point whereby later on I was able to apply all of those things and start creating and, and designing and inventing pacemakers and other medical products. We were the first company to make our own hybrid technology in-house. So what we're doing at Kips Bay is to make a device that we can put around the vein before it goes on the heart. This is made out of wire. We now have some patients that are approaching five years with this device. 
always been a lot of fabulous things that have happened in my life. I've often said many, many times that the, the hand of God is on me. I've been blessed in so many different ways. The exposure that I had at the Boys Club, for example, not only did they help me, but over the years I've been able to go back and help them and work with young people who are in the same situation that I was, who are struggling to try to get out of their situation. Once you got love and attention, then you can reach. You can say, gee, well, I want to do this and this and this. They'll show you how to do it. Throughout Dr. Villafaña's incredible success, he never, ever forgot the Bronx. When he earned his first million dollars, he donated funds to build a swimming pool and a tech center for his beloved Kibbs Bay Boys and Girls Club, which he still visits and still contributes to to this very day. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to induct our first 2017 Bronx Wall of Fame inductee, the cardiac kahuna himself standing up in that beautiful bow tie, a man with a reputation that stands the test of time. Please welcome to the stage, Dr. Manny Villafaña. I just tell you a short, short story. Okay? How many days do you have? <laughs> I walked in here, and there was a young lady who decided to interview me. And she's, in, you know, I'm supposed to say a few words, two or three words, and, and she says to me, Can you tell us how many things at the Bronx helped you in your career? And I said to her, I thought we had three minutes, not three days. <laughs> Starting with not only the Boys Club, but going even a little bit further back with my mom, Elisa Villafaña, Puerto Rican lady. <laughs> going to a fine Catholic school St. Luke's School on East 139th Street. <laughs> Graduating from Cardinal Hayes High School. These were the things that I took from the Bronx that helped me to go further, learn a trade, finally improving on that, and giving hope to a lot of people. Today, there are over 10 million people with the products that we have developed. And I want to I wanna just say this. I know that some of the things that we do are something that you typically wouldn't hear coming out of the Bronx. That is high technology, medical technology. But let me just say one last thing. Many, many days I spent in Montefiore Hospital when there was a doctor there called Cy Furman doing some preliminary early pioneering work in the field of hard pacemakers. And he helped me a lot, taught me a lot, and then, and then eventually both of us were inducted into the Pacemaker Hall of Fame. But let me say thank you for honoring me, one of the greatest honors I've ever had. I've been blessed with a wonderful family. My wife Elizabeth is here. 
my daughter. She's beautiful because she has, she's beautiful because she has my wife's brains and my good looks. <laughs> Thank you again. Come on, let's give it up for Dr. Manny Villafaña. All right, our next honoree is from this side, ladies and gentlemen. Draw your attention to that table right there. We call him an innovator, an originator, an entrepreneur, someone who's done everything from video games to apps. He's a producer, he's an actor, and so many people say, in Flex, we trust. He has played with the likes of, like what? Like what? Like what? Mary J. Blige. What? Uh, he's done 50 Cent, Fat Joe, Remy Ma. But what I like about him is, he, this, he, he also does, this is what New York sounds like. So a lot of new artists like Axel Leone, like Oom P, like Fred the Godson, all from the Boogie Down, have been on his show. In 1992, he started the first hip-hop show in New York City, the first, first ever hip-hop show. And, yep, and it still airs on Hot 97, and it is in national syndication. I want you to take a look at why, in Flex, we trust. Funk Master Flex Night. Funk Master Flex Night. Funk Master Flex Night. My name is Funk Flex, and I spend most of my time trying to be a DJ. Funk Master Flex is an icon amongst DJs. He shows you how great a DJ can be. The fact is that DJs have never achieved the kind of celebrity he has. I think he's beyond one of the world's greatest DJs of all time. I have to say he's probably the smartest DJ in history. Born um, by Boston Road on Hick Street, 1315 Hick Street. It was great, you know, being West Indian, being Jamaican. My family, my dad was a DJ, so he was into the music. I saw the turntables and stuff coming in and out. You know, I lived on the same block as Slick Rick and Chuck Chill Out when he was on Kiss FM. His girlfriend lived on the other corner. There was a lot of pressure to be successful and to carry the Bronx well. The Bronx DJs was the first to really claim and own hip hop. The Bronx is about catching a piece of the record that excites you the most and winding it back to the top. In 1987, I experienced my first big break. I was carrying Chuck Chillout's records, and he got sick and he couldn't go. I got a chance to play. I, I realized that not only could I do it, but I realized that I had what it took if I'm willing to adapt and change and compete and not be stuck on an ego. And it also made me respect, you know, Mr. Magic and Molly Maul and, and Red and Chuck, because those were the guys at the time. My goal was to be as good as them. I don't think I'd be doing what I'm doing if I wasn't born in the Bronx. Because the Bronx had a pride for DJ and MCs. We came a long way to be acknowledged individually. And there's been a lot of talent to come out the Bronx. If you're from the Bronx and you're persistent, you can't give up. So let me go a little off script here. For you to understand the history of hip hop, this started where the Bronx at the time, uh, there was a lot that left to be desired and there was a lot of young folks like uh, Ku Herc uh, and others and Flash. They developed this genre of music and it's about dance, it's about putting words together, it's about 
your fashion. It's about um, expressing yourself through art. And so there are individuals who took it to the next level. Funk, Fle Funk Master Flex has not only been brought up through, from, um, in hip hop, but what I love and appreciate about him most is that in a business and an industry, which by the way has taken over the planet, think about, if you look at, if you, and, and if you, if you look at hip hop, it's the way that a, a, a white girl from Texas relates to a black boy from Brooklyn. It's the way that a white kid from Schenectady, New York can understand what a, 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 a Mexican-American in, in East LA is going through. It's by far, by far one of the greatest tools that have been able to bring together the racial divide. Don't trivialize it. You may not understand it, but what I appreciate about Flex is that he's from the Bronx, never forgets about it, and he opens doors, like I said earlier, to so many others. No matter how big you are, Jay-Z, if Jay-Z wanted to drop a new song tonight, he goes and he gives it to our next inductee, Funk Master Flex. Funk, you are a hip hop pioneer. Not only radio, but so much more. Please welcome to me, right here, 2017 Bronx Walk of Fame inductee, Funk Master Flex. Thank you so much. Does anybody have more swag than Ruben Diaz Jr.? His swag is at a thousand, man. I think I was told I only had three minutes, right? That's out the window today. First of all, I'd like to thank my children, Dante, Jaden, Hunter. My little man, I'd like to thank Maria. Maria, I see you. I didn't have anything prepared for this, even though I knew it was coming up for weeks. Uh, I really enjoyed the, uh, uh, the um, some of that throwback stuff that I had definitely forgot about. Anyway, I'm born 1967. I don't care about showing my age tonight because it's the only place in the world that I can have this type of talk tonight. I was born on Hitch Street in the Bronx in the BX by Boston Road. I went to St. Philip of James. I went to St. Francis of Assisi. I used to ride the 41 bus. I used to ride the 14 that doesn't exist anymore. I'm just trying to, I used to go to the Whitestone Theater. The first time I heard hip hop fully was at the Skate King Roller Rink on the Allerton Avenue. If you've been to the Skate King on Allerton, you put one hand in there right now. I'm born and raised in this BX, okay? When the White Castle on Fordham Road was small. I'm just telling you what it is. Okay? I used to carry records for Chuck Chill Out. He lived on 222nd and, and Barnes. You're absolutely right. I used to carry records for Cool DJ Red Alert. When I, I, lived, when I moved to 4159 Dorema Avenue in the Northeast Bronx, I had a tree in front of my house. And the kids that were older than me used to play nonstop, back-to-back -back Cold Crush Brothers tapes from back to front. I grew up on Grandmaster Flash, I grew up on Cool DJ Red Alert. 
And let me tell you something. You could go anywhere in the world, even in New York, you can go anywhere in the world and somebody says to you, I'm from New York. You talk to them to five minutes, you ain't from the Bronx. You ain't from the Bronx. You can tell in 30 seconds, right? Uh, Ruben Diaz Jr., I thank you. I think our first meeting, he brought up the Cold Crush Brothers. As a matter of fact, we met because um, right before the museum and, 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 and all the things about, um, I think it opened already, where we're gonna keep track of hip hop and things like that, we spoke. Uh, you were very stand up. I could tell that you loved the music. The first that you dropped earlier was, I'm gonna tell you, so you guys don't even understand. He didn't drop a verse off a single. He dropped the verse off an album cut. You gotta understand, you know, what that is. But uh, I've been blessed. If, if I didn't come from the Bronx, I wouldn't have the career that I have because um, I was blessed to, be, to see something very early before it hit any other borough. I was able to see music and, and it was so aggressive here in the Bronx. And let me tell you something. If you ever see anything that's hip hop, you know, a 50 Cent, a Drake, all the biggest things, uh, J-Lo, all the biggest things you've ever seen, it comes from the Bronx because people like Cool Herc and people like Africa Bambada, you know, and, and I want to be specific with that, Cool Herc and the Herculoids. I want to be specific tonight. Africa Bambada, Jazzy J, Africa Islam, Cool DJ Red Alert. That was the Zulu Nation DJs, and that's what I wanted to be. That was the coolest thing in the world. And let me tell you something. I, don't, I know everybody's kind of young, younger than me anyway. Grandmaster Kaz. I don't know, do you got people, anybody here that knows Grandmaster Kaz or know of him? Don't lie to me tonight. Don't lie. Grandmaster Kaz was the first time I ever heard the word fresh. It was the first time I seen somebody wear their hat to the side. As the first time I ever seen somebody stand like this. i never seen that before in my life and it was amazing. BX, I thank you. I owe the BX everything that I have. Love. And Ruben Diaz, thank you. A great honor and I appreciate it. Thank you. Let's give it up for Funkmaster Flex. This next. Flex, thank you for that. I don't want to say what happened to Kaz and the Sugar Hill Gang. <laughs> this next young lady was raised in the Bainbridge section of the Bronx. She has managed to excel in a career which spans performing on the big screen, the small screen, and the stage. She has played several roles from a lady of the night, to a lawyer, to a teacher, to La Reina de la Salsa, Celia Cruz. She has won multiple awards and today stars in the hit series on Netflix, Orange is the New Black. Which by the way, recently won its third consecutive Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Ensemble Cast in a Comedy Series and is returning for a fifth season in two weeks. Let's meet our next honoree. <laughs> oh, you think that's funny? <laughs> you listen to me. You think because I messed up, you're gonna follow in your mother's footsteps? Well, let me tell you something. You're dead wrong. 
From now on, you're gonna come here. Every week, you're gonna bring your homework. And if you don't, I will make your life a living hell, even from in here. You hear me, little boy? So currently, I'm most known for playing Gloria Mendoza on Orange is the New Black. When we were shooting it, we were like, wow, this is a really good show. I hope somebody watches it. The season one premiere, it was in the Bronx. It was in the Botanical Garden. Seeing her walk the red carpet, and it wasn't like she was out of place. She was so comfortable within her. Every Law & Order, I've been in it. I was a prostitute at one, then I'm like the lawyer in the other one, I'm you know the suspect in one, and then I'm the detective. I'm very proud that I am from the Bronx, and I will say it to this day, every time somebody says, where are you from? I'm like, the Bronx. And they're like, no, but like, where are you really from? I was like, yeah, the Bronx. I grew up in the Norwood section of the Bronx on Bainbridge Avenue, right by Montefiore Hospital. When I think about home still, um, I think about that house, I think about Bainbridge Avenue. My parents are immigrants, my father is from Cuba, my mother from the Dominican Republic. And they came here and they worked really hard to make sure that their family had stuff that they never did. My parents who have given up so much of themselves, of their time, of their energy to just be so supportive of my career. You always knew there was something special about her because she, was, she wasn't, you know, you're running a mill regular girl from the neighborhood. You know, she always wanted more and followed her dreams and never gave up. I've just been proud of her for all the hard work that she's been doing. As a Latina in Hollywood, you know, there's responsibilities. You want to make sure that you are setting the bar up high, that you are a good example. I hope that my Bronx community understands that success is not just for others. You know, success comes to everyone who works really hard. This girl from the Bronx, you know, had this amazing dream. Everyone around me would laugh, you know, but somehow that didn't stop me. So pursue your dreams because anything is possible. Selena's who also stars Peter Parker's teacher, Miss Warren in the blockbuster franchise Spider-Man. It's gonna be a homecoming premiering in July. But the question, everyone, is on everyone's mind tonight. Selenis, will Daya pull the trigger? Is Humphrey a goner? I need to know, please explain these things. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor. It is a pleasure. Please welcome to the stage the 2017 Bronx Walk of Fame inductee. Selenis Leva! Animals trap, trap, trap till the cage is full. The cage is full. The day is new. And everyone is waiting, waiting on you. And you've got time. Think of all the roads. Think of all the I got emotional, like, watching my story. Like, I don't know what happens. So I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I, I feel ridiculous, but um, <laughs> thank you to our Bronx Borough President. Thank you for representing with such heart. <laughs> thank you. Um, Olga, thank you so much, and everyone who's worked so hard to make this event possible. Congratulations to the, my fellow inductees. I am honored, I am humbled to be in your presence. Thank you for representing the Boogie Down the way you do. Um, the Bronx is home. It's always going to be home. No matter where I'm at, no matter what part of the world I find myself in, no matter what I'm doing, it's home. It's my foundation. It's where the girl dreamt of becoming an actress. It's where she pleaded with her elementary school and junior high school 80 on Marshall Parkway to create. Yeah. <laughs> I pleaded to create a drama program and they gave me like 30 minutes, you know, in between classes to, to get in there and I got upset because nobody took it serious but me. But still, I wanted to make it happen and along the way, people said, how can you even dream so big? 
Hollywood doesn't belong to people like you. They don't sound like you, they don't look like you. And at the time, I was like, yeah, okay, but then I'll be the first one. <laughs> Duh. But I only thought this because I have a foundation of incredible support and love. love That's right. My father and my mother, immigrants to this country, like most of us. That's right. We came here, and we come here not to take advantage, but we come here to make this nation better. We have a lot to offer, so don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So my mother and father who are here, and my siblings and my daughter, that's home. Table 10, that's home. My mother from the Dominican Republic, Adelaida Leiva. My father, Arnold Leiva from Cuba. Ustedes, por ejemplo, me han enseñado que es sacrificio y trabajar. Okay, gracias. They are the backbone of my success. They are. They are the reason why I have to fight and be better because I once said, I will not let their sacrifices go in vain. I need to be better. I need to be better. We need to be better in the memory of our ancestors and the people that came before me. We need to be better. And now, my 14-year-old, the love of my life, my daughter, Alina, all I can say is, you gotta dream big, baby girl. There's no excuse. And to my brothers who would make fun of me when I would talk in front of the mirror by myself, look at me now. <laughs> but seriously, the Bronx is home. I often get asked, what's your inspiration for Gloria Mendoza on Orange is the New Black? People always, you know, think, they're like, oh, how did you come up with her? And I'm like, well, she is an homage to the women I grew up with. She is the tough woman who would go to the corner and stop a fight without even blinking an eye or would get in your face if she needed to. And she was scary at times, really scary. But she would also have so much heart that she would offer you a plate of food even though that meant maybe she wouldn't eat that night. That's heart. So when I think of my Bronx, I think about, yes, it could be menacing if you don't know it. From the outside, it could be scary. All right now. But if you've ever gone to the botanical gardens, if you've ever walked down Fordham Road to the shopping, that was my, that was my jam back in the day, Fordham Road. If you've ever played in the Oval Park like I did with my siblings, if you ever went to Orchard Beach for that fierce tan, you know that the Bronx has heart. So I am so grateful for this moment beyond compare because it's bigger than me. It's bigger than everyone in this room. It means that someone out there, a little boy and a little girl, will have someone to look up to and say, she looks like me, she sounds like me. It's possible to be successful. Yeah. So thank you so very much. Thank you. Come on, give it up for Seleni Sleva. All right, are we ready to fall in love? Are we ready to sing a song? I'm looking at you. <laughs> um, some of the songs, Goodbye al Corazón, Darte un Beso. He's triple platinum album, triple platinum baby. He has since become not just a Latino superstar, not just a Dominican superstar, he is a superstar. He has successfully combined R&B with bachata, 
to create a whole new sound is sabroso. Tiene amor, tiene pasión, tiene... ¿Qué más, Olga? Dime, dime. Pas... Sí, eso. No puedo explicar, pero una más emoción que es dentro de tu cabeza, tu cuerpo, y, y tú no puedo hacer nada, pero bailar y vivir esta emoción, ¿sabes? Sí, gracias, Olga. He has scored 15 number one hits, won 22 Latin Billboard Awards, 19 Premio Lo Nuestra Awards, 19 Juventud Awards, nine Grammy, Latin Grammy nominations. You're so cansada, ¿sabes? I want you to meet our next inductee. My parents are from the Dominican Republic. You know, I was very attached to the Latin community, the, the language, the music, the food, uh, but I was also very attached to, to America and the music and, and growing up in New York City. Ford train, I used to take this every day, everywhere. Cousin's house, take it to school, I'll take it to work, take it everywhere. Prince Royce. I grew up having two different perspectives, uh, one in English, one in Spanish. I love it. Uh, two different cultures, very different, but I think that to me it, 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 it's one, you know, I'm just as American as I feel Latin. Well, I'm grateful, I feel blessed to see how, you know, I can touch people through music, to see how these songs have become part of people's lives. You know, I think that music uh, works in a mysterious way. You know, it's there when when you're sad, it's there when you're happy, it's there at the club. For me to be a part of so many people and seeing how emotional and how happy they can get, I think it's a blessing. I'm definitely excited to, to, to represent my community and where I'm from and take this to the next level. is his 15th number one hit on Billboard's Tropical Sound, a duet with Colombian singer Shakira. He will be kicking off his five tour in 21 cities throughout the summer. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our 2017 Walker, Bronx Walk of Fame inductee, Prince Royce. <laughs> With all the beautiful speeches that came before, man, the pressure's on right now. Now, I want to thank anybody, everybody, Ruben, appreciate it, all, everybody that made this happen. It's a great honor for me. Um, growing up, I would take some classes at Hostos, and I would, you know, walk down the Grand Conference and, and see the names there and be like, you know, one day that's going to be me, and today the day came, and I'm just really grateful to be here with you guys tonight. I want to thank my mom, Angela. She's there sitting there and the way she raised us, me and my brothers, my family over there. I grew up on 140 and 3rd Avenue, Patterson Projects, and I think that, I mean, the Bronx definitely molded me to who I am today as a man, as a human being, as an artist. Um, I think it's, New York is just such a big melting pot, you know, and growing up, I have nothing but beautiful memories in the Bronx and just, um, 
I, I miss it, you know, I always come back. And I remember times when I would, you know, I used to work at a Sprint store on 225th and Broadway selling cell phones. <laughs> I used to sell cell phones having that dream, you know, and, and I would go to school and I would take the train and, you know, as a kid, a memory I have is taking the four train uptown and, you know, there's that little crack on the, on the Yankee Stadium back in the day that you could see the game sometimes. That was like a big memory of mine and I think that the, the Bronx really um, is who I am and I hope to continue to motivate the youth and continue to work with the community to be, to be greater and better and, um, I hope that my story and our stories, everybody here that got inducted tonight, can continue to motivate our community, the Bronx, New York, the world, that everything's possible when you work hard. So uh, thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Let's give it up for Prince Royce. And let's give it up for all of our honorees and inductees tonight. Come on, make some noise for them. We, we had fun tonight, didn't we? I don't know about you, but sometimes I get tired of like the old stuffy dinners. And I'm so happy that we were able to laugh, relax, and now we're gonna dance. And we were able to do so because one particular young lady puts us at ease. Let's give it up for Suki one more time. <laughs> Suki, we love you. We're gonna miss you too. And W picks. Que se vayan ellos para el Caribe Hilton. We want a couple of things. Tomorrow, we will be inducting and unveiling the honorees' names uh, to the Bronx Walk of Fame, which you all know is the Grand Concourse. Uh, you're all welcome. It's going to be outdoors. The weather's going to cooperate. Then we are going to have our parade on Mashula Parkway. We shut down the entire Mashula Parkway. The parade is, gonna, uh, is a nice festivity of our youth, Mashulu, Mashulu, Mashulu. Mashulu, Mashulu Parkway. What did I say? What did I say? Is it Mashulu or Mushulu? We'll have a debate. In any event, in any event, tomorrow, We'll have the International Food Festival. We're gonna have a concert. Adolescente is gonna be with us. If you like freestyle music, we have TKA. And if you, if you like hip hop like me, Slick Rick and Dougie Fresh are gonna close out the show. To all of the inductees, would you please come up with your awards so that we can take some photos here. Have a good time tonight. You don't have to go home. Please party and celebrate everything good about the Boogie Down Bronx. We're not snow chips. Oh, yeah.
Hey! hey.